solve a 3 by 3 system of linear equations by Kramer's rule. Here's our 3 by 3 system. So we have three equations that contain three variables, x, y, and z. We want to find the solution, which is an ordered triple x, y, z. And the solutions are given by x is dx over d, where dx and d are two different determinants, and we'll show how to build those. And y is dy over d, again determinants, and same with z, ratio of determinants. So the key to using Kramer's rule is figuring out what are the determinants, evaluating them, and getting the ratios. So here's how we build them for any 3x3 three three system. This process works well for 2x2s, two 4x4s, two, four whatever. You can expand it to any system you want. All right, so the most important one is the regular D. I call that the foundation determinant. We're going to build that one first, and from it, we're going to get the values of all the other ones. What we do to get the foundation determinant is we look at the coefficients of the x, y's, and z's, and picture this left side of the system here, pulling off all those variables, and whatever's left for the coefficients is what you put in to the d. And if you don't see a coefficient next to a variable, that means it's a 1. So we have 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 4, 3, and you see we're putting them in the exact same order they're appearing in the system. 1, 1, 4. So it's important when you get a system of linear equations that you put it into this format here where you have the x, the y, the z, and then equals the constants. If you have any missing pieces in here, then the coefficient of the missing piece would be a 0. All right, so we'll evalu evaluate that later. First, we want to build dx, dy, and dz so we can get our ratios and figure out x, y, and z. So I'm going to move this over. All we need in order to build our new determinants is to look at the D and take pieces of it. And what I want you to think about as we build it is this first column is the X column for X coefficients, Y column for Y coefficients, and Z column. All right, just as it appears in our system, X, Y, and Z. All right, so DX. And I like to build them vertically like this, because it's going to make it a lot easier to fill in the missing pieces. Get that, that, that. Alright, dx. What we're going to do is leave this x column blank because we have dx. But we're going to fill in exactly what we see up top for y and z. 1 minus 4, 3, 1, 1, 4. Now we go to dy. We're going to leave instead the y column, or the middle blank. And for x and z, put exactly what you see up top. 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 4. And then dz, we leave the z column blank, which is the third column. And put exactly what we see up top for x and y. 1, 1, 1. 1 minus 4, 3. And then we fill in the missing columns. The missing columns are all going to be exactly the same. If we look back at the original system here. The missing columns are always filled in by the constants on the right side of the equation. So we put in minus 5, 35, minus 18. Minus 5, 35, minus 18. Minus 5, 35, minus 18. All right, then we're going to figure out what those determinants equal. If you're not sure how to do out a 3 by 3 by hand, uh, watch the Evaluate a 3 by 3 Determinant video. So this first one, D, comes out to minus 15. DX comes out to minus 30. DY comes out to 120. DZ to minus 15. And now we can find X which is dx over d, y, dy over d, and z, d, z over d. All right, so x is going to be minus 30 over minus 15, or 2. y is going to be 120 over minus 15, which is negative 8. And z is going to be negative 15 over negative 15, so z is equal to 1. So our solution is 
2, minus 8, 1. Whoops, there we go. And that's our final answer.